Probably the easiest way to think about depression is the way one would think about fever. It is a symptom of an array of different kinds of potential problems that lead all the way from daily minor blues that somebody might have, all the way up to uh, diagnosed disorders that need an array of treatment. We're not talking about what happens during a particular day or two days, but if you or somebody you care about for two weeks feels down, sad, depressed, tearful, that's one of the key warning signs. Having that in and of itself doesn't mean anything. You have to look further than that. The other symptoms for completeness, in addition to feeling down, depressed, or blue, and having lost interest or pleasure in what you normally do, is how has it affected your sleep? How has it affected your appetite? How has it affected your concentration? How has it affected your feelings about whether you are doing a good job, whether you feel guilty, uh, whether you are uh, feeling very agitated or very slowed down. And then finally, the question that most people feel most uncomfortable about is, is it bad enough that you wish you didn't wake up the next day? Do you have some kind of thinking that you might life, uh, life to end? Now, many people have that fleeting thought. There's nothing abnormal or unusual about it. We're talking about sort of a, a sustained way. These days, there isn't a person who doesn't know somebody who isn't depressed or has depressive symptoms and also probably doesn't know somebody who's on a medication for it. That's how common and prevalent it is. The other important thing to understand about depression is while it is a chronic disorder, it's a chronic recurring disorder. By 2020, it is going to cause the uh, second most amount of disability and poor health in the world. Treatment. This is a very critical and important area because there are two strategies to addressing treatment. There is a medication strategy and there is a psychological strategy. And there are lots of people who have no interest in meds, who might be interested in a psychological strategy, and we have people who are, have no interest in doing something psychological. They want a pill that they can take that will make them feel better. So we have as many antidepressant medications to treat depression as we have antibiotics for the various infections. The problem is, is that unlike a 10-day course of antibiotics, which takes care of your, your fever and your uh, uh, bacterial infection, it does not work that way with depression. If you are going to take a medication, you really are th having to think about taking it for a six-month period of time. If you are not interested in medication or you want to try something else in conjunction with medication, there are a number of psychological strategies uh, to approach depression. The strategies really break down to two various approaches. One are behavioral, okay? So one of my edicts for someone who's depressed is thou shalt exercise. Getting your heart rate up, getting out and doing it when you don't feel like doing it has antidepressant properties in itself. Mobilizing yourself, pushing through the not wanting to, not feeling motivated, actually leads to feeling better. For many people, these strategies will be enough. But there is going to come a point in which you are not responding. And that's the time to talk to your primary care physician about whether you should meet with a therapist, a mental health professional, who can both support you and walk you through some of the self-help tips that I gave you. Sometimes you need a coach in your corner and it's hard to burden family and friends. That's when it might be time to think about bringing uh, a coach in, a mental health professional. Particularly if you feel that you do not want to go the medication route and you're not getting better within a month, it's time to think about getting some help in your corner. One of the things that you need to understand about our institution is how integrated our various departments are. So for those of you who have your primary care doctor at Tufts Medical Center, or in the larger system, the NEQA system that, it, that Tufts Medical Center is a part of, that collection 
of primary care doctors has regular contact and work with the Department of Psychiatry here at Tufts. We both provide backup consultation to your primary care doctor without involving you as an individual, or if you decide or you and your doctor decide together that you need psychological care or specialty care, the Department of Psychiatry has a mood and anxiety disorder clinic here that is available for your services that you can get by calling the central number for the Tufts Medical Center. The Department of Psychiatry has specific expertise in diagnosing and treating depression that hopefully can be of use to you.